This is a great time to be a billionaire gearhead, no question. Manufacturers are practically tripping over each other to bring their adjective stretching hypercars to market, complete with their four-figure power outputs and seven-digit price tags. This is a golden era for those with bottomless pockets and an urge to go very, very quickly. But what about those who are fractionally further down the pyramid, the unlucky ones who find they can't quite crack the 1% of the 1%? These are the guys who can stretch to a McLaren P1 or a Porsche 918, but who don't want to be stuck with one of the same entry-level supercars that their lawyers and chiropractors Drew McLaren has, with the new 675 LT. The $350,000 plus sticker is still some way short of affordability for most of us, but it looks like an outrageous bargain next to a $1.15 million McLaren P1. Because after driving the LT both on the track and on the road we can confirm that, despite costing less than a third as much as its hybrid sibling, it's at least 97% as exciting to drive flat out. One obvious problem to start, you can't actually buy a 675 LT, at least not for McLaren. The entire global production run of 500 already has sold out, with fewer than 180 of those likely to come to the United States. And those fortunate folks will find themselves owning what we predict will be one of this season's hottest automotive tickets. The 675 LT is a spectacular example of overcompensation, a lightened and tightened response to the criticism that was leveled at the original McLaren MP4-12C's relative lack of excitement. The 650S addressed that to an extent, but it's the LT that shows just how far the common mechanical package that underpins all of McLaren's current models can be taken in the direction of sweaty palm thralls. Nobody will ever accuse it of being too refined or dynamically aloof, indeed, it's probably slightly more exciting than aerial combat. LT stands for Long Tail, a reference to the evolved version of the McLaren F1 that was built to keep it at the sharp end of 1990s sports car racing after rivals responded to its first surprise victory at Le Mans. Despite that, the 675 LT is barely any bigger than the 650S, its length grew by only 1.3 inches, although it does have a redesigned back end and that irresistibly motorsport grade polycarbonate engine cover. This and the other exterior modifications have mostly been done to improve aerodynamics, with more aggressive diffusers front and rear as well as new end plates on the front bumper steering air into a new side channel. We're told the 675 LT produces 40% more downforce than the 650S and significantly improved engine cooling. The biggest visual difference at the back is the arrival of twin, howitzer grey tailpipes made from a titanium alloy that turns blue after hard use. The quest to trim weight has brought out McLaren's innate tendency toward obsessive compulsion like nothing else. The claimed total savings are an impressive 220 pounds versus the 650s coupe, and that's come by shaving mass from what is already the lightest car in its segment. Yes, there's more carbon fiber, but you've got to love a company that switches to titanium wheel bolts to save 1.4 ounces on each one, a cumulative reduction of just 1.8 pounds across the whole car. The 10 spoke. Forged aluminum wheels are also 1.8 pounds lighter, total, than the optional lightweight ones on the 650S, and the carbon frame seats save a combined 33 pounds. Both air conditioning and an adjustable passenger seat are no-cost options, the only way you'll get the lightest possible 675 LT is by foregoing both. Not that the cabin feels like the hermit's cave you might be expecting. There's more carbon and micro suit, but otherwise it feels very similar to that of the 650S. The only noticeable equipment loss is the disappearance of the door-mounted climate controls, those functions are now handled by the central touchscreen. The instrument display and central console are the same as in the 650S, with normal, sport, 
and track modes for both the suspension and powertrain settings. There's also a new dynamic mode for the stability control, as well as the option for the brave, foolhardy, and well-insured to turn it fully off. Any suspicion that the 675 LT is just an expensive 650S with every carbon fiber option checked lasts no further than the first half mile of driving. It's a very different beast, one with a core that's much harder and a heart that's much blacker. The ride quality, for instance, feels like a session with a seasoned dominatrix, when compared with the weld amped compliance of the standard 650S. McLaren had carefully picked out some of the smoothest roads in the south of England as part of the official drive route, but we used local knowledge to find some more typically crenellated British tarmac. At low speeds the LT feels very firm, even with the dampers left in their softest mode. The good news is that the chassis gets better as you add speed. It doesn't find more compliance, but the body control is outstanding over rougher surfaces and the resistance to roll under cornering is almost total. The steering feels very different, as well, with a quicker rack and revised front suspension geometry giving both faster responses and a noticeable increase in both weight and feel. Think where you'd like the LT to go in, before you can frame the thought, it's already heading there. Grip levels are predictably massive, although the track-focused Pirelli P0 Trophius give their best only after being fully warmed up. The brakes bite with reassuring force, although bigger stops make the vast rear air brake pop up and completely obscure the rear view. The engine is more vocal than in the 650S, and cruising is fractionally louder, but it's still impressively composed at rapid highway speeds. The twin-turbocharged V8 relatively modest increase in output to 666 horsepower might suggest that little has changed over the 641 HP 650S. McLaren names its cars after their metric power figures, we convert the output to SAE ratings for publication, but, this being McLaren, the opposite is the case with an extensive package of modifications designed to improve drivability and boost response. The LT gets a spark cutting system to help enable the dual clutch automatic transmission to deliver the fastest possible upshifts, and apparently some internal components of the 650's engine struggle to deal with the forces involved. There are lighter camshafts and connecting rods as well as machined compressor wheels for the turbochargers. It doesn't rev higher than the 650S, sharing the same 8,500 RPM redline, but it is noticeably keener in the top half of its rev range and, as promised, gear changes are brutally fast, and they come with a fat bump of torque courtesy of McLaren's inertia push system. We were only ever going to learn so much about the 675 LT on the road without being arrested, which is presumably why we were also given the chance to drive it on track at Silverstone. The home of the British Grand Prix remains one of the most miserable places in the world to go and see a motor race, with grandstands made from construction scaffolding and the permanent feeling that, even when it's not raining, it's about to. But for anyone lucky enough to find themselves on the other side of the barrier it's one of the finest tracks in Europe to actually drive. The 675 LT couldn't be more at home here if it registered to vote and started paying taxes. It's supremely fast and accurate, and seemingly unflappable even when asked to deal with a solid stint of high-speed lapping. Higher cornering loads reveal a predictably neutral handling balance, with the turned-up steering and that mid-engined weight distribution giving both a sharp turn in and outstanding traction. With the stability control left on there's very little slip, although it's possible to power the back of the car right to the edge of adhesion. Switching to the more permissive ESC dynamic mode allows the LT to reveal its ulican tendencies with an unexpected amount of power oversteer before the system steps in. And yes, that's unexpected as in we spun. But you don't buy a car like this to pussyfoot around a circuit, 
you buy it to go flat out and to discover exactly where the limits lie, and then to find out what happens if you go a little quicker. Invest the time in getting to learn it, and it will make you feel like a hero every time you take it to the track. The LT demonstrates the breadth of ability within the Clarence core architecture. Dynamically it's pretty much the diametric opposite of the original 12C, edgy and thrilling where the car felt composed and self-possessed. It's also the reason that nobody will be able to say that McLaren's lack excitement ever again.